Hello everyone. Welcome to the banana special edition of In Conversation, our interview series for the PMFME scheme monthly e-newsletter. PMFME is an acronym for the Pradhan Mantri Formalization of Micro Food Processing Enterprises Scheme, a landmark initiative launched under the Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan by the Ministry of Food Processing Industries, Government of India. To know more about the PMFME scheme, please visit www.pmfme.mofpi.gov.in. For queries related to the PMFME scheme, you can call on our helpline number 9113022810089. To subscribe to our monthly e-newsletter, please click on the link mentioned in the description of this video. In this edition, we will be interacting with Dr. S. Uma. Director, ICAR National Research Center for Banana. ICAR National Research Center for Banana, Tiruchirappalli, Tamil Nadu, has the vision of bringing out sustainable increase in the production and productivity of bananas in India. This is one of the premier institutes with global recognition that has contributed enormously for the growth of the banana industry as a whole. India is one of the centers of origin and diversity for bananas and plantains with almost 120 varieties in cultivation throughout the country. Considering the contribution of the banana sector in the agricultural GDP of India and with the aim of strengthening basic and strategic research to improve the production and productivity of banana in India, ICAR National Research Center for Banana was established at Tiruchirappalli, Tamil Nadu on 21st August 1993. The institute is home to one of Asia's largest field gene bank with 410 accessions that are conserved using advanced techniques for future generations and used in banana improvement by researchers across the globe. The institute provides services for providing disease-free quality planting material to banana growers and offers customized training programs on advanced production, protection and post-harvest value-added products to farmers, entrepreneurs, self-help groups and students. The center strives hard to tackle the problems faced by various stakeholders in the Indian banana industry and achieve the target production of 50 million tons by 2025, thus making India Atmanirbhar in domestic as well as export markets. I would like to tell our viewers about today's guest. With more than 30 years of experience, Dr. S. Uma has expertise as a researcher, research coordinator and research administrator. She is serving the Indian Council of Agricultural Research since 1990 and joined the National Research Center for Banana in 1993 as the first scientist. Her research extends on the conservation of traditional bananas, in vitro conservation and cryobanking. Her specialization is in tissue culture where she is developing high throughput patented technologies that are being globally appreciated. Dr. Uma and her team were responsible for developing a C protocol for the export of bananas which could keep bananas green even after 15 days of harvest. Her contribution to banana research has fetched her three international awards like the Paisang Raja Award, and six national awards, including Dr. M. H. Mari Gauda National Endowment Award for Best Horticultural Research in 2018, and Punjab Rao Deshmukh Best Woman Agricultural Scientist Award for Outstanding Contribution in the Field of Horticulture. Dr. Uma has been recognized as a fellow of six societies, including the prestigious National Academy of Agricultural Sciences. She is a member of World Banana Forum. She was elected as the chairperson of Banana Network for Asia and Pacific and as a representative in MusaNet Expert Committee. She has authored more than 100 research papers and a number of books as well as technical articles. I, on behalf of the Ministry of Food Processing Industries, Government of India, welcome Dr. S. Uma. Namaskar. Thank you. Madam, could you please tell our viewers about the scope of banana processing in the emerging food processing market? As all of you know, the place of banana in food processing market is very nascent. Uh, it is the uh, second largest fruit next to mango. 
in terms of area if you see we have grown from 4 lakh hectares to 8 lakh hectares in the last one to one, one and a half decades and production from uh, almost uh, uh, 10 to 12 million tons to 31 million tons in 2020 and we contribute almost 21% uh, of the global share. So this is the kind of uh, uh, magnitude banana contributes both at the domestic level and even at the global markets. And uh, all of us know it is very rich in nutrients, dietary fiber, and it has a number of uh, therapeutic values which many are not at all aware of it. It's good for anemia, blood pressure, constipation, depression, for hangovers, even for heartburn, morning sickness, ulcers, strokes, so many are there. But people are not aware of it. But the question is, um, how much of banana we are uh, consuming and what should go for processing? Although we produce around 31 million tons, uh, except for the 20 to 24% 20, uh, of uh, post-harvest loss, rest of it we consume internally. Export is very little and processing is, I would say, rather only 5% of what we produce, it goes into processing. That too, out of that 5%, 2.5% exclusively goes for banana-based products, I would say uh, chips or puree or anything. But rest 2.5%, it goes as an ingredient into many other food products. So it becomes a substitute for many other important food products, uh, without which the, uh, the magnitude of the other food products will not come into the market. If you say chips and candy industry, out of the 5% uh, which I was talking about, 31% goes for processing. It, uh, the chips and candy industry alone, quantity-wise, if you see, almost uh, 2 lakh tons goes for chips industry and uh, candy industry. This gives almost 500 crores business annually. The rest is puree and uh, almost 9% of it is puree. Out of the 5% I'm talking is 5% is 9% uh, is puree. Uh, beer is around uh, less than 1%. Then 3% goes into pulp industry and banana powder industry contributes to 6% of the uh, what is produced out of, processed out of banana. So this is a broad picture of what banana processing industry goes into. In your opinion, what are some of the key factors that determine efficient processing of bananas? See, banana uh, marketing, production, marketing like any other crop is very unorganized sector. It is uh, dependent on various products which all of us are aware, uh, market fluctuations, either you see glut in the market or distress sale and many times the production factors, the production functions for banana producing, that also matter a lot. Then the purchasing power, which is from 5 rupees per fruit to uh, 25 rupees per fruit, depending on the variety, it matters. Then the distribution system, what we have in our country, this is a sector which needs a lot of improvement. And finally, the end point delivery, which we have never looked into. We produce tissue culture plantlets uh, in a laboratory, safely we plant. We take care of it, we fertigation, um, integrated pest management, so many high-tech precision farming, everything we do. But after we harvest, how do we care for the fruits? And uh, the advantage of banana process, uh, the advantage is that uh, I would rather say we can compare with mango. Uh, this mango being seasonal fruit, uh, whatever the industry you develop, it works only for uh, four months, 24 bar 7. After that, rest of the month, it remains idle. So from a uh, crop like banana, which is high volume, but low cost, uh, basically for any food industry, that should be the mantra. For any sustainability, it should be high volume and low cost, where banana can be a good example for this kind of sustainability, if at all you are thinking about. That's when the uh, banana processing industry will really take a leap about. Could you please tell us about the support and facilities provided by the National Research Center for Banana to micro food processing enterprises engaged in banana processing? As I was mentioning, both the uh, utilization of banana and also banana waste is a nascent um, industry, uh, both in the country, even at the global level. So knowing its potential, uh, NRC Banana uh, has invested in research in using each and every product out of banana plant. Uh, that's why we call it as banana as a kalpataru. Uh, banana plant, all plant parts are having one or the other use. So it's a plant of all virtues. So we are trying to exploit how to use 
each and every part of banana to put into uh, some kind of use. So if at all, see, you are talking about uh, banana food processing. That means only 30%. The bunch contribu contributes to only 30% of the uh, production. But remain, the rest 70% goes as a waste. If at all, you are thinking about processing banana uh, fruit, it has to be in a holistic manner. Fruit processing is separate and rest of the 70% of the banana biomass utilization is another important factor which you really have to take into consideration if at all it has to be a profitable venture. So that is why in our institute, we have more than 30 products developed. Uh, I would Here we have classified into edible products and non-edible uh, products. And in edible products also, we have from raw banana. From raw banana, like banana powder, you can use and banana peel. Uh, banana peel almost contributes again 30% for the fruit wastage. If you eat 70% pulp, you may eat. Re uh, remaining 20 to 30% is always a waste. It has a lot of therapeutic values. It has dietary fiber, pectin, and many other ut uh, uses. So we have even we have used banana peel as an ingredient for processing. Then after ripening, how the fruit has to be consumed, uh, either for powder or for juices or in the liquid form. So there are different products we have prepared. Uh, the, if you go into our website, details of the products are given. And you will never uh, uh, believe you can develop banana beer, banana vinegar, uh, banana ready-to-drink juice, banana soups. Everything is available for it. So even the technology is available with NRC Banana. And the technology transfer protocol is with us. And many beneficiaries, beneficiaries or the stakeholders have been benefited uh, by transferring this technology and they have uh, they have converted themselves in, into a commercial entrepreneurs so and this is one thing we have the technologies at the same time we also have agribusiness incubation centers wherein uh, these technologies who, the, uh, will be transferred to any entrepreneurs through hand holding we can support them for six months um, up to six months with our technology, with our uh, quality certification and complete supervision, we can help them. They can come, be with us, uh, understand the technology, develop your own products, make take it to branding, take it to uh, marketing. Once you are confident, then you can have your own entrepreneur, uh, enterprise outside the NRCB premises. This is the kind of support we are ready to. We have, For that, we have excellent infrastructure, excellent dedicated team of post-harvest scientists. You can always come and make use of what are some of the conventional and some not so conventional yet very interesting value added products that can be made from bananas uh, j just to name some of the uh, examples what uh, products which are which we have developed uh, first thing is from banana raw banana i said banana powder uh, banana powder many of you do not know it has some resistant starch uh, this resistant starch um, will bring bring the, will have low glycemic index and this banana powder can be raw banana powder can be complemented with your chapati wheat powder atta uh, and make chapati so by that the glycemic index of even chapati or wheat flour comes down by 30% when you complement banana powder with atta so this uh, example, not many of you are aware of it, but uh, I think banana powder industry is going to make a big leap in the days to come. So this is from banana floor. So I said from banana skin, how, what are the things you can make out of it? This can be made into uh, different uh, uh, pickles with the dietary fiber. This can be an addendum or a complementing material for many of the uh, biscuits. Which with the dietary, this contributes to dietary fiber. Any biscuit will have a component of banana uh, peel, banana peel powder in it. Then coming to banana fruit, you have banana fig, which everybody knows about it. Re dehydrated banana, you can just dehydrate it and keep it for one year in your home. Whenever you feel like eating a banana, you can take out a fig and eat. Then apart from that, you have uh, banana uh, juice, ready to serve juice. Vinegar is made, banana uh, wine is made, uh, can be made. Then excellent product, banana puree, all of us, you know, banana pulp, it is an ingredient for many jam, jelly, um, 
uh, many of the products uh, this becomes an ingredient then apart from that you have also have uh, as i was mentioning non edible products uh, i which i have not touched about is banana waste uh, the pseudostem i was talking about uh, which contributes almost 70% of the plant which we never look at it after you harvest the uh, bunch from this we can extract uh, banana fiber from the uh, pseudo um, or sheath what we call it as sheath uh, from this fiber has excellent utilities these days uh, people are looking at uh, they have proven this is one of the best uh, ingredient fiber for the textiles uh, this is uh, still not commercially people have not come out uh, uh, talking about this but a good amount of research has already gone and many big uh, names have gone into producing high quality banana fiber into uh, textiles Apart from that, this banana, fakru banana fiber can be a part of many things. I don't know how many of you know, even Japanese yen, 10% of Japanese yen is made out of banana fiber. And this also, uh, another important utility is, it is used as a, a cordage in the shipping. Because when you anchor the ship, it is uh, the whole uh, rope goes into the seawater and it stays there for a long time. Many of the fibers will disintegrate because of the high salt content. But banana rope is resistant to this and potentially used as uh, ship uh, cordages in the ships. And it also removes a lot of oil with spills in the sea. So a lot of advantages. Maybe if you go to our website, there is a book on banana fiber. If you read that, you will be very, very surprised to see many of the excellent utilities. And apart from that, the banana central core stem. We, the inner core, inner core no, what it has, it is excellent source of potassium, excellent source of dietary fiber. And we have uh, developed machinery. Let's see, the, for value-added products, you should always have some kind of a system, value, proce uh, pro value system, a uh, processing system where these are converted into products and given to the end users. So we have some kind of machineries which they cut into small, the pseudostem is cut into small pieces and with minimal processing, it goes into all uh, vegetable shops. People are, uh, have, they do have access to uh, banana pseudostem for making which it's a very uh, highly liked vegetable but people find it very difficult because of removal of fiber with minimal processing we are able to give you the pseudostem ready to use type and the other thing is uh, the powder from banana pseudostem uh, they, uh, it's a indigenous technical knowledge i would say in northeast if you see a variety beam coal they call it as it is a seeded banana but its pseudostem is high, so much rich in potassium people use it as car that is when you have stomach upsets and all that they use as the alkaline medium to saturate your stomach ailment. So the, after burning it, they make it a car and it is sold in the market. So these are many different potential people are using. And the other important uh, utility is the underground rhizome. Whatever is thrown out, which we don't even see uh, outside the soil surface, the underground rhizome, uh, they, cut, they use it as an animal feed. Animals, they like it. Uh, and uh, there are some research which has shown that uh, feeding animals, especially in Maharashtra and even in Western, uh, in African countries, feeding animals with uh, uh, small suckers and also the rhizome portions has increased their milk content. So even uh, whatever left out, everything in one or the other way is being used by either mankind or by the animals. So the products are excellent. Uh, variety of products are available, uh, edible and non-edible products. And best thing is the handicrafts. I never talked about banana fiber is known for making handicrafts. It's a big business and the whatever scutcher waste you get when you are extracting fiber, it goes into pulp industry and the fiber people are planning to use it in the acoustics. And uh, now we are into some kind of research with another uh, engineering department, engineering university, I would say, where we are trying to make uh, as interiors for high end cars. So people think they have even for aircrafts, uh, it can be the banana fiber can be excellently used. So these are the uh, potential utilities. I think in days to come, they will be revealed. Coming to the aspect of research, could you please tell us about the kind of banana based research and development carried out at NRCB and interesting research outcomes that you have come across in all these years? 
uh, NRCB is an institute which works on all aspects of banana and we work only on banana. Uh, as you know, uh, first and foremost thing is we say it is we division of crop improvement when we say we work on diversity of the crop. Uh, in your introduction, you mentioned there are about 100 to 120 varieties grown in the country, but there are more than 1000 varieties grown in the uh, uh, globally. So out of these um, 1000 varieties, we have also imported around uh, 125 varieties into our uh, country. Uh, and we are trying to see how best these can be uh, introduced into our cropping system because our, our bananas are highly susceptible to one kind of the uh, of one kind or the other pests and diseases so we need to give growers uh, which is resistant to the pests or the diseases which are predominantly radio burdening the production banana production system so in the whole process we are assembling the diversity and we are trying to see among this diversity which varieties are uh, which cultivars are resistant to say uh, a pest like uh, rhizome weevil or a pseudostem borer or diseases like uh, uh, fusarium wilt uh, and more so the tropical race for which is much talked about and uh, leaf spot diseases the ervinia rods and also the viral diseases of course for viral diseases you don't have any variety resistant but at least for the fungal and bacterial diseases we are trying to identify which are the varieties. So once we know these, uh, the resistant gene sources are available with some varieties, we are trying to hybridize them and bring out new varieties. But in banana, uh, when I say hybridization, immediately you should be thinking uh, when you cross it, there's a, there should be some seeds and I should be developing some banana, uh, new hybrids. But you cannot imagine banana with seeds in commercial varieties. So uh, here is very uh, tricky area where when you want to develop new hybrids, you want banana with seeds. When you want to eat, you don't want banana with seeds. So this is where our uh, scientists are working, uh, how to develop banana with seeds to develop new varieties. At the same time, how to give it to your consumer a good banana without any seeds. So this is what we are struggling. So in the whole process, we are also improving through mutation breeding, through many molecular approaches. And most important is um, developing um, biofortified bananas. So uh, these days, um, the anemia among the pregnant people and even the rural community and vitamin A deficiency is also very predominant in the Indian population. So to overcome this, there is a project supported by Department of Biotechnology and also monitored by PMO's office, which says to develop banana varieties enriched with vitamin A and enriched with iron. So this is a biofortification process through genetic modification. But here the interesting aspect is the gene is coming from another banana variety. So that way the uh, the official guidelines will be much simpler compared to any uh, GM crops. So uh, we have developed a banana, the grand nine, we have uh, brought in 15 times higher vitamin A enriched grand nine and 5.5 times enriched with iron. So now it is in the final uh, stages of uh, biosecurity issues and bioavailability testing. And once it is done, I think in another th three to four years, you have a variety ready for release. And this is one variety. This is one thing. The other one uh, in our in, in your introduction, you did mention about NRCB developing high throughput tissue culture uh, technology. In normal tissue culture, you can produce thousands of plants, but in this next generation tissue culture, you, you can produce millions of plants. This is a new technology using bioreactors. And for this, yes, Institute has applied for a patent and once it is granted, I think it will go to all um, uh, end users. And the next thing is uh, in the production, we have developed all the production technologies, even whether it is a garden land cultivation or a hill, hill uh, higher altitude cultivation or any kind of cultivation, we have developed a production technology and it is available in, in our website. And we have developed high density planting system for banana where you can produce more um, uh, higher productivity within a unit area. Another important thing is uh, farmers are aware of it uh, providing uh, the macronutrients for banana, but Institute has developed a micronutrient mixture which is very important for banana bunch quality development. Uh, this is very widely used uh, among all the southern states, well tested, and it en enhances the yield at least by 20%. And Institute has also developed many measures which uh, 
uh, especially like drought amelioration met uh, methodologies. We have some chemicals. Whenever you have a drought uh, where water is availability is extended over a period of 20 to 25 days, if you spray this chemical, the plant have the capacity to withstand drought. And other thing is we have also identified bananas with, our, with low glycemic index. Because uh, any doctor, if you go, a diabetic, a diabetic person, if he goes, to, he goes to a doctor, first thing he will say is don't eat bananas. But that's not right. You should know which variety to eat and when to eat. Bananas can be eaten when the uh, fruit is yellow, but the tips are green. That is the right stage for the diabetic people to eat banana. That is the stage when glycemic index is less. So people should know if you have a craving for banana, uh, don't feel bad. You eat at the right stage. And at the, and the next research is developing biomolecules from banana. Uh, like you have uh, red uh, anthocyanins, the red color uh, from the banana flowers, banana bract we call it as. The red coloration is very good for uh, color industry. Food industry is very much essential. We, are, we use uh, beet, sugar beet for re giving red color, but this is almost uh, triple, uh, three times higher uh, color colors it can give. And it is a cheap source. It is available within us. We need not import or anything. So the kind of biomolecules the plants can give, we are working on many other biomolecules like this. In post harvest, we are working on resistant starch and we are working on uh, uh, developing edible uh, covers, edible uh, covers for the fruits itself. And to uh, extend the shelf life, what are all the post-harvest, uh, pre-harvest and post-harvest um, technologies we should follow. All this is given to the farmer. Another important thing in production technologies, Institute has developed a protocol for sea shipment. Uh, to uh, other countries. Banana is known for, uh, send, uh, they, they, uh, it's a common method is to send it by air, exporting banana through air. But by the sea protocol, uh, we, we can keep bananas fresh in the green stage for about 40 days during your uh, voyage. So it can reach uh, even uh, Europe after 40 days of harvest in the same green fresh uh, color. So once you, it reaches, they can ripen it uh, and then uh, say, uh, give it to the consumers. So this has brought down the cost by 70%. And people now are already following this C protocol. Um, in most of the southern states, um, C protocol has becoming more and more common. And in Kerala alone, in for a one firm itself is exporting bananas worth 400 crores annually because of our sea voyage. So this is the kind of handholding we give it to the people. And very recently, we also shown that bananas can be sent to Europe. After 40 days of uh, travel, it still remained green. And the Kerala government has uh, taken us as the consultants for banana industry, both for Andhra Pradesh and also for Kerala, we have signed MOU. So the kind of uh, handholding we give to the complete stakeholders, I urge people should make use of us even more. And in the diseases sector, I think I forgot to mention, uh, we have identified many uh, fusarium wilt resistant genotypes, which is really uh, affecting the global banana industry. We have grand nine varieties, some ecotypes resistant to uh, fusarium wilt, tropical race for which we may bring it down to commercial uh, production in days to come. And we have also, uh, best thing is, uh, we are very good at uh, diagnostics, especially virus diagnosis. In tissue culture industry, it depends on the selection of a good mother plant, disease-free mother plant. So virus is very, very important. So every time taking it to the lab, testing for virus has been the way of uh, doing things. But we have developed a diagnostics, that is the dipsticks. Like you test your pregnancy, you, know? uh, you just uh, crush a leaf sample, uh, you have a dipstick, you just dip it and see. If there are two bands, okay, this plant is virus affected, you can discard. Don't take any suckers for using it in the tissue culture industry. And uh, multiplexing, uh, we even uh, two viruses we can identify by a single dipstick. So these are all the excellent uh, uh, research um, uh, progress which we have made uh, till date. Uh, and many have gone into commercialization. And NRCB is giving a service to the banana industry. Like in the last five years, we have certified more than 300 million plantlets, tissue culture plantlets, to be given to the farmers. 
So this is for DBT in association with DBT. We have done this and we are also doing continue to do it for other tissue culture companies. They get it certified by NRC. We test it whether it is free from viruses and give the certification. That is why a lot of virus uh, diseases have come down. And this is also another reason how the why the productivity has gone up in the country. So these are the human services which Institute is doing. Like you initially mentioned about handholding, providing handhold to various stakeholders. Another important aspect related to food processing is training. So could you yes. please elaborate on the various training initiatives carried out by the Institute, especially the banana fiber extraction and utilization training program? Trainings are uh, a part of our uh, uh, day to day life because we are supposed to uh, train the stakeholders with the technologies, uh, uh, new technologies. Uh, one such is we give training in all aspects of banana production, starting from production of planting material, um, even production of banana shakti and how to use it and uh, how to index viruses, uh, how to diagnose in diagnostic techniques, not only national trainings, even international stakeholders are coming to learn these techniques from our institute. With respect to trainings in post harvest uh, uh, technologies, of course, um, whoever comes to us for buying a technology, it is always associated with a training. It's not that we take money and just give the technology. We also train them uh, depending on the product they are taking from two days to five days. It depends. Even on tissue culture, people are coming. The training, it ranges from 15 days to two months, depending on the kind of technology they want to learn from us and the who are our beneficiaries. I think uh, I would say all the states, people from all the states have come to NRCB for training. And I'm more happy to say people from northeastern states, especially uh, from Meghalaya, uh, from Assam and Sikkim, people have come they, uh, from NGOs. Uh, women have come uh, trained and they have gone back. And if you see in Meghalaya, now chips industry has taken a mainstay in the market. The chips industry has become very, very famous in Meghalaya after this training. And uh, Nendran, which has never gone beyond uh, Kerala, uh, has reached even uh, Meghalaya and Assam as a snack industry, as a snack food uh, industry it has reached. So, uh, the trainings with respect to post-harvest products, regularly it grows. Almost every week there are one or two uh, people who are coming to buy the technology and going. Then when it comes to um, uh, fiber industry, again, fiber industry, the products are plenty. Uh, I think in the whole process, I also forgot to mention, even we produce uh, personal hygiene products um, from banana fiber and uh, edible plates. Uh, where plastic is being replaced by um, use and throw plates. Banana leaves are used as um, bio plates. So even making bio plates and even making uh, tissue culture trays, how to make tissue culture trays, disposable tissue culture trays, a degradable tissue culture tray. All these technologies are available with us. People are coming to get trained. And uh, fiber extraction technology, how to make handicrafts out of it and how to make other uh, value added products. All these uh, trainings are uh, available with us and anybody who are interested can write to us when there is a group it is easier for us to arrange but after this covid things i think uh, we can take up this training on a much larger scale and i will i hope you people uh, should make use of the institutes like us how does the institute help micro enterprises incubates in terms of branding marketing and promotional activities First thing is marketing. Um, we are in the process of developing uh, an app where um, banana marketing can be uh, taken care of in at least in two to three states. So in this, as I said, uh, we have a complete uh, database of the uh, farmers uh, because uh, more than uh, 100 uh, FPOs across the country we are in touch with. So we know which are all the FPOs and who are all your producers and what is the area, what is their production. At the same time, we also have buyers the exporters, the buyers, we are, they are all in touch with us. They are also on the same platform. The moment the, uh, this much area is coming to harvest, uh, it will be displayed on the website or it will be displayed on the app. Then there are the people who will look for it. Then on video call, they look at the quality of the fruits. If it is good for export, people take it for export. If it is for the local market or if it's for the elite um, uh, ma malls or the re restaurants, people take it depending on the quality. So everything is made easy on a single app. 
this is one thing and branding definitely we are trying to help the uh, farmers based on we are trying to teach them not to sell banana as a mere banana fruit we are trying to tell them give the value to that give the value addition or the exclusive importance of the product you should mention so the nutritional analysis we are trying to uh, do that for them and based on the nutraceutical values we are trying to brand it whether it is a nutraceutical banana whether it is a gi uh, glycemic low glycemic bananas or if it is for uh, high sugar bananas if it is for a specific product like that uh, specific branding we are trying to also develop and uh, the end users are there many uh, market linkages are there either in big cities like uh, uh, chennai and bangalore we are trying to link them up and try to see that these products reach those uh, end users with the immense experience that you have gathered over the period in the food processing sector and having been closely associated with the pmfme scheme according to you what are some of the key areas that micro food processing enterprises need support with and how do you think the pmfme scheme would be able to support micro food processing enterprises in those respective areas a uh, very uh, rightly uh, asked question i appreciate this there are many strategies i think uh, uh, though uh, ministry of food processing is going in the right the line uh, with respect to banana and it holds good for many other crops uh, same thing would have been told uh, for many other crops but still i would like to emphasize uh, that first and foremost thing is uh, bringing them into the msme bracket is very is a prerequisite for, to boost any processing horticulture or any uh, products and this also holds good for banana then the creation of cross functional convergence is very very essential with the developmental agencies the cluster formation at the production points then fpos then market intelligence then assessment of the impact through the technological incubation what we are ha already having as agri business uh, incubation center and these cross cutting initiatives should be the primary step for any successful entrepreneurship development in processing industry and the big uh, by uh, big players like itc britannia or you say parleji or uh, uh, bone vita pepsi pepsi cola dabar they should come up with a plan to utilize the products like banana flour fruits and juices in their product portfolio as i said banana can complement many of the uh, foods and fruits so the big player should come up uh, to be part of this uh, processing industry to support the uh, stakeholder because small companies we may talk about 101 companies but if a big company takes it up on a larger scale the reach will be much more then as i said the share of processed industries in agriculture employment is uh, especially with banana is less than uh, 0.5% so the first thing is uh, developing methodologies based input output models which provides information about the cluster wise formation of banana uh, where banana is being produced and uh, if need be we could identify which are the major catchments for supplying the fresh producers so if you bring them on a same platform all the buyers the producers and there is an app developed for that then they should immediately access if i have this much uh, tons of banana produce i immediately should be able to see my uh, buyer depending on the price he offers so using artificial intelligence or an iot and app based platforms to provide this kind of real data in inputs is very very essential and the third thing is uh, uh, india is a land of uh, 200 varieties there are about 30 uh, varieties the uh, land races we call it as are the farmers varieties which are highly highly um, important with respect to nutraceutical values or therapeutic values we have never explored them based on and branded them so like nendran Nendran is uh, almost uh, uh, more than 200 times high vitamin A compared to any other grand nain and other food products, uh, other uh, fruits. But we have never uh, favored Nendran. We have never developed any Nendran-based uh, industries which provides this much of vitamin A from a uh, fruit sector itself. So branding based on their therapeutic and nutraceutical values becomes very very essential here, which people have never explored. Global industry depends only on grand nine. Grand nine ha doesn't have these many therapeutic values, but we are on a beneficial end 
with varieties with therapeutic values, which as I said, for your stomach ulcer or your uh, kidney stones, even the central core stem juice itself is a very good for uh, uh, dissolving your kidney stones. We call it as anti-lithiatic properties. This we have never explored. Then coming to right infrastructure, like converting banana powder into uh, flow, uh, banana, raw banana, ripe banana uh, into health powder, making banana puree, all this had to be strengthened. So the low glycemic sugar controlling capability of banana flour has to be rightly marketed to enhance the demand for banana based products. And at the same time, I would say uh, the dried, uh, dried fix dried figs have a long shelf life not perishable we should think about including that in the noon meal for the children in the noon meal scheme then they have all the health benefits of banana and without any problem of uh, uh, distress market and it will reach the end user more appropriate and since this dried banana also has longer shelf life uh, we have uh, recommended this that it should be used for defense people who are serving in the high altitudes with where they do not have any access to fresh fruits and all these uh, nutraceuticals, bio, uh, bio the fractons uh, has to be, de uh, de uh, these we are using that into developing the symbiotic fru uh, foods uh, through secondary agriculture. So these kind of symbiotic uh, foods has to be, they have to be uh, commercialized or they have to be more popularized, which people we are not looking at it. And apart from that, there are from the waste we are using the edible films and the personal hygiene products, the handicraft, the textiles, the composite boards from the banana waste all have to these. There should be an organized way of making uh, using them. There should be a way which is not really uh, there is uh, in, uh, input is there, but by end buyer is not there. So bringing again them the same platform and creating creation of markets and showing them a delivery system is again uh, more important to make it uh, banana processing a profitable venture. What would be your advice to aspiring entrepreneurs who are planning to venture in the world of food processing, especially at the micro food processing level? Yes, uh, definitely banana is a very, very profitable crop if you're thinking about developing, um, becoming a good entrepreneur. But before that, uh, you should know about uh, have a knowledge about uh, artificial intelligence and IOTs, then the market policies and where are the, your technology partners. You have a good um, a link with all these people before you want to become a good entrepreneur. And once you become an entrepreneur, especially for banana, then branding and boosting this entrepreneurship, uh, for that you, you take help for uh, creation of uh, incubation platforms, then uh, take help from the uh, partners like us for providing market intelligence and for uh, better hand holding. And in the whole process, uh, also have to have, you should have an eye on marketing systems. These are the complete uh, value chain and the marketing chain are very, very important before you develop. Uh, first, find the demand. I, I, it's not always, it is what happens is uh, based on production, but it is your, whatever products you develop, it should be uh, market driven. So first create a market, first create a branding. Then of course that the partners like us are with, uh, with you and uh, we are there to help you to have your own market, have your own brand, have your own market and make you into a successful entrepreneur. Thank you. Ma'am, thank you so much for taking out time and interacting with us. I hope our viewers would be enlightened and encouraged to know more about bananas, banana processing and explore the world of food processing. Thank you so much for the opportunity. All ICR institutes will be uh, happy to handhold with Ministry of Food Processing and empower the stakeholders. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. If you like this episode of In Conversation, please do leave a like and share this episode with everyone. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much.